Hi everyone, it's Mike here. Now today I just want to touch briefly on um, going back to old pages. Now sometimes we do an art journal page or a project that we're not 100% happy with and in the past I haven't really gone back and revisited old pages to redo things. I have occasionally but it's not something I do on a regular basis and I know there have been questions in the past about, you know, is it okay to go back and do it? Well, of course it is. You know, you can flick through your art journals from five, ten years ago and see a page that's not quite finished or you might want to do in a different way. And it's quite acceptable to do that. It's your art journal. You can go back and do whatever you want to those pages and don't feel guilty about doing it. So, but for me, occasionally I'll do an art journal page and there'll be something niggling in the back of my mind that, you know, that I could do differently. Uh, or I'm not 100% happy with it and I'll keep going back and looking at it and occasionally I will jump back in and do something and change it so and this project is one of those now this project has been ongoing for me for the past fortnight because it is one of those ones where I do a little bit on a night and then put it to one side and then come back to it and do a little bit more and then when I got to the end I wasn't happy with it and it's taken two or three attempts to get it the way not necessarily that I want, but the way that I'm happy with it. And in this video, I show you all three of those different variations of the ending until I am happy. So I hope you enjoy it. If you do, I'll see you again at the end. So this art journal page has taken me around about two weeks to complete off and on just by doing 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there on an evening or when I've had a little bit of spare time. Now it started off as a test for printing on some tissue paper and the background pattern that you can see on this page is exactly the result of that. So, and I'll be covering the printable tissue paper thing in another video in a week or so. Um, but for the time being, all I've done is just seal down the tissue paper with some twisted citron distress paint and a couple of days later, which is where you're joining me now, I'm just going over those pages with some indigo blue white gesso. So I will shut up for the time being and jump back in again in a little while. So I've finished brushing on the white gesso onto the page, I'm just having a quick tidy up and then I'm going to use that baby wipe just to start removing some of the paint again. I know we put it on and then we take it off again but that's just the nature of our journaling. So all I wanted to do was just create a kind of ghosted effect with that gesso over the page so you could still see the backing paper and the under paper there on the page but it's not quite so prominent. And now I'm going to give it a blast with my heat gun just to make sure it's all nice and dry before I move on to the next step. All nice and dry, so out comes the Distress Paint Walnut Stain Colour and I'm just going to add some of that to the page um, just around the edges to start off with and then through the middle and then I'm going to grab a baby wipe and start moving that paint around just to add that kind of vintage, kind of worn, weathered look. I've had these papers in my stash for quite some time now, I didn't really know what to do with them so I've brought them out today so I can finally use them in an art journal page. So all I'm going to do is using the matte medium from Mod Podge, I'm just going to glue these down onto the sides of each facing page and then I'm going to just go over the tops and then seal them in and then we can start adding some more colour and detail.
and adding the mod podge onto the back has enabled it to be all wrinkle and bubble free, which is nice. We need to get it all dried up and all nice and sealed in. So out with the heat gun and we'll give it a quick blast, make sure it's all nice and dry before moving on to the next stage. So this is a, an old book page that I've taken from a very, very old book that's been sitting in my stash for this very purpose for quite some time. And using the Distress Paint, the Walnut Stain again, I've just applied some to the page and then with a wet wipe, I'm just moving the paint on the page to make sure it all soaks in so I'm getting a real dark page effect. And I'm just adding some water because before it's dry, you can move it and you can alter the depth of the paint before it dries. So you can do that to your pages, to your heart's content, until everything is dry. And just to make sure my page is completely dry and if there's no dampness to it, I'm just going to give it a quick blast and then we can move on. Now we're all nice and dry, I can tear this piece of book text into fragments and using the Mod Podge I'm just going to glue them down in random places around the page um, and then just give them a quick seal. And as you can see, I'm using the fragments of the book page to obscure the straight lines of the papers that I've already stuck down in the journal. Although the matte medium is quite quick drying, I am just going to bring the heat gun out just to make sure that it dries super quick so we can move on. 
So using that walnut stain distress paint again, I'm going to add some more to the page. And this time we're going to knock those pieces of book text into the background and try and blend in those edges. As I did previously, I'm using a baby wipe just to soften and blend the paint on the page. I'm happy with that. So once again, to make sure everything's nice and dry and make sure none of that paint or colour moves, we're just going to dry it with a heat gun before moving on. Now that the paint's dry, it's time to add in a little bit more detail, a little bit more layering. So we're going to bring out the Tim Holtz Dot Fade stencil and I'm going to be using my Jet Black Archival Ink and a foam blending tool. And all I'm going to do is just put some of that black through the stencil randomly across the pages. It's now time to add my quote and my phrase. So I'm using the Dilutions journaling block, as you can see there, Dilutions. And I'm going to draw a pencil mark, just following the wavy line of the journaling block. And then I'm going to grab my Signo Uniball white opaque rollerball pen. And then I'm going to write in my quote across the double page spread. And if you're anything like me and make mistakes, don't forget while it's still wet and you've used the matte medium, you can just wipe it off with a baby wipe.
And again, using the Dilusions journaling block, I'm just going to draw some decorative white lines underneath my quote and phrase, just to finish it off. Okay, so this is the page so far. Now, after leaving this overnight and looking at it, um, I'm really not happy with the way that the wording is, is not standing out enough. And I think I need to add some gesso to, to knock back that background a little bit so that I can write some darker words on there. Now, I've used the Signo White Uniball, Uniball Rollerball Pen, this one here. And, Obviously this has now been dried for a couple of days on the page and uh, I need to remove it. So just as an experiment, I've taken a wet wipe. And don't forget, this has been dry for a couple of days. Now watch. I know, I couldn't believe it either. So even though this has been dry for a couple of days with a wet wipe, I'm literally just removing the writing. Now, this is one of the reasons why I use Archival Ink, because if I'd have used um, any Tim Holtz Distress Inks on here, then these would also start moving too. So even though this has been a couple of days, uh, and as you can see, I, I have added some black around the border as well because I just thought it needed it. Um, I've now been able to remove that white writing completely with a baby wipe and it's not moved any other colour on my page. So I'm now able to rescue that page and add some gesso and then I can redo the writing again. So I'm just going to dry this off and then grab some gesso and then I'm going to start applying it very, very thinly just across the background. Okay, I shall do what I normally do and shut up talking and put some music on. Okay, I'm back. So we have a nice little diffused kind of white gesso -y kind of background there, and that's gonna help my writing stand out a bit better. Now, I just had a thought about this pen. Um, when I created these pages, I did seal everything down with matte medium first. So I, everything's gone, been gone over with, with matte medium, and then the, dis, not the distress inks, the archival inks have been used through the stencils. So um, it is sealed. So that's probably why this wipes off with a baby wipe. If you hadn't done that, or if you haven't painted 
or gone over your page with a matte medium sealer or anything like that and then it might not wipe off. So if you do try and remove it and it's on a porous surface it probably will smudge and probably won't come off. But if you have sealed it with some form of matte medium, gloss medium or whatever, some kind of medium, then it probably will wipe off without any problems at all. So there we go. So I'm now able to go back in again with my pen, this time with the black one and I'm going to use my uh, trusty food ball pen and I can redo my little saying this time instead of it being white I can do it in black and I can do it in slightly a different way so if I bring it down here and then I can grab a pencil Actually, that's probably not a good idea. I might actually just do this straight onto the page. So. There we go. So that stands out a lot better. And I'm happy with that. Not 100% happy, but that's the nature of art journaling. We're never completely happy with everything. And, you know, as a, a page done, as a, an on spec one where I hadn't really an idea of where I was going with it, then, you know, I'm fairly happy with the way that turned out. And um, it's maybe one of those pages that I do come back to later on. Maybe, I don't know, who knows? Who knows what the future may bring? It sounds like a really good title for a song, that. Okay, so after staring at it for a couple of hours, I really decided that I wasn't happy with the black writing on there. And I've decided to go with the label printer and print out a label, which I've already done. Now, I've done it in a medium kind of size text. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut these words individually and then I'm going to draw using the journaling block. I'm going to put it so it's almost in the middle of those white lines and I'm just going to give it a quick pencil to follow and I'm going to place the words along that line and we'll see how that looks. And well, I'll put some music on because you don't want to sit there watching me um, do this in real time, so I'll be right back. Okay, now that I've gone over everything with matte medium, it means I can now just try and blend those words in a little bit by using one of these Faber-Castell Pit Artist Big Brush Pen, and I'm using the medium flesh, which is kind of like a, a little bit of a pinkish colour. And all I'm going to do is just to add a little bit of the colour around each of the word blocks. Because I've used the matte medium, it does allow me a little bit of time to be able to just blend it with my finger. That looks 100% better. I think I am literally now going to stop. Not going to do anything else there at all. Now, I suppose I could have 
actually <laughs> saying that. Yeah. Okay, I give in. That's it. Done. Finished. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching me change my mind, do things differently, wipe away and start again. And as I said before, it is, you know, one of those things with art journaling where you can go back and change things if you're not happy. So I'm happy with mine now, ish. Mm -hmm. um, so I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, then you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. And that's all from me for now. I will see you all again real soon. Bye for now.